our top stories tonight. As campaigns for Edo 2024 gubernatorial election gains traction, People's Democratic Party receives Action Democratic Party House of Assembly candidates into its fold. Correspondent examines conflicts associated with mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws identifies personal gains as responsible for infighting. Operatives of Nigeria Correctional Center recapture re 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 fleeing inmates from the medium security custodial center in Niger State. This is the EBS Comprehensive News. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on the EBS Comprehensive News. I am Joy Musa Agedu. The political strength of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the forthcoming Edo governorship election has received a boost with the defection into the party of the former Action Democratic Congress ADC candidate in the last House of Assembly election in Igwebe local government area. Honorable Paragon, Azemegbe with his supporters. Friday, Ahimoto reports that the ceremony held in Ebele, Igweb, and local government area attracted PDP leaders in the area. Dr. Aswe Igodalo, upon arrival in Ward 6, Ebele, Igweb, and local government area, was received by Timmy supporters. Welcoming the PDP candidates to Igwebe, the council chairman, Honorable Clement Aswelime, noted that Dr. Aswe Igodalo will be the next governor of Edo State come September 21 this year. On his part, former Igwebe local government council chairman, Honorable Omi Imwensili, thanked Honorable Paragon Azamegbe for coming to join the PDP, saying that victory is sure for the party. You will be happy to work with. Uh, Paragon, we are going to work together to strategize to deliver more than 90 percent. PDP is a belly, and a belly is a belly. So, we didn't want to switch away by the next election without hearing ADC and all those ones, and the labor and all. Oh. May, may, may we not Dr. Aswe Igodalo says, Honorable Paragon Azemagbe joining us with the PDP, the forthcoming Edo governorship election will be a walkover for the party and assure that he will run a government of inclusiveness and development if elected. And I'm very happy. I thank God. I know that a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work is going on. And I pray that we all continue with the work. Amen. What I said the last few times I come here, I repeat now. But well, I don't want me to talk too much. He said we will make each other proud. Yes. Igweben will make Eastern Land proud. Eastern Land will make Igweben proud. But I, by the grace of God Almighty, eh, when I become governor of this state, by the grace of God and the goodwill of the people of Medo State, I will make Igweben proud. I will make Eastern Land proud. Hallelujah. <laughs> On his part, Honorable Paragon Azemegui said his decision to join the PDP was as a result of the antecedent of Dr. Aswe Igodalo in the past, promising to work for the victory of the party in the governorship election. When I saw the antecedents of Mr. Aswe, the incoming governor of Edo State, and I've checked what he has done before now, I decided to work with him. That prompts me to work for People Democratic pa uh, Party, which is PDP. Meanwhile, Dr. Aswe Igodalo also made a brief stopover at the residence of Mr. Fidelis Owabu, 
also known as Omomba in Okuta, Ebele, Igweben local government area, Friday Ehimoto, EBS News. Ahead of the Edo State gubernatorial election, the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate, Dr. Aswe Godalo, has inaugurated Aswe Godalo Osaudio Oge Women in Ubiaja, East and South East local government area. Friday Ehimoto reports that Dr. Aswe Godalo was also received by modern traditional medicine practitioners of Nigeria and Odua People's Congress, OPC. Yes, we don't show, we don't show. Dr. Aswe Igodalo performing the inauguration of Aswe Igodalo Osaudion Oge women in Ubiaja, Eastern Southeast local government area. Coordinator of the group, Lucy Irabo says their inauguration is to work for the victory of Aswe Igodalo and Osaudion Oge in the forthcoming Edo governorship election, assuring that they work assiduously for the victory of the PDP. It is truly a privilege to witness the power and strength of the women in Ubiaja coming together to support a candidate who embodies the values and qualities we hold dear. As we rally around behind Aswe Igodalo, we do so knowing that he's a man of integrity, vision, and a true co commitment to serving the people of Edo State. Dr. Aswe Igodalo, while addressing the women, noted that he will ensure women are carried along in the scheme of things in his government if elected. From town to town, from unit to unit, from ward to ward, we are going to form this women campaign for AI and OK. I was going to form them, everything. Yeah. Say by the grace of God Almighty and by this work with the Ubiacha women for AI they do yes. long carry go. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Aswe Igodalo was also received by modern traditional medicine practitioners of Nigeria and the Odua People's Congress OPC. The key, they pass it, Papa. You go pass to Abate. They go see the surrender. They go do pass it, Abate. By the grace of God, you are going to win an election. Is it also? Friday, Himoto. EBS News. Research reveals that there are always more conflicts between mother in laws and daughter in laws when compared with that of father in laws and son in laws. What could be responsible for this development? Benedito Carte was in the streets of Venice City this Sunday to seek answers. Here are his findings. Conflicts among people is believed to be part of human nature, which in many cases help people to better understand themselves as they journey through life. However, our focus in this report is why is there more conflict between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws when compared to that of father-in-laws and son-in-laws in the marital life. Findings revealed that the conflict between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws is largely hinged on when both subconsciously or otherwise are competing for affection and recognition from the same man for their personal gains as well as unrealistic expectations. This respondents, Reverend Phil Aroji, Archbishop Osama Uswanlele, Prophetess Folake Akinto and Madam Stella Awinyo gave their divergent thoughts on the issue. Generally, women take turns personally. What a man will see and overlook, a woman will see it and read meanings to it and take it personally. So this conflict between um, daughter-in-law and mother-in-law usually happens because of the nature of women. Women are created as talkers. Like the mother loving the son and uh, you know, during the time of breastfeeding, there's a relationship that has been built up. And so mothers are very close to their sons. And as such, um, that great love that they have for them, even when they are grown, they, to the mothers, they are still their babies. When the boy goes to marry, you still see the mother watching every step of his son. So when he takes a wife, and if the wife is not following you know, that footstep of the mother, 
the way she raised him, the way she would want things to be, there's bound to be conflict. As a mother-in-law, you must have prepared your mind that another daughter is coming to marry your son who is from a different background. Archbishop Osama Uswanele and Prophetess Folake Akinto gave tips on how to curtail the common conflicts between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. Your son has a life to live. He has a home. He has a family now to build. So interference should not be there. A mother-in-law that wants to see the end of the pots in a son's house will have conflicts. Leave them. Let them enjoy. Them. Let them live their life. Others argued that fear of the unknown between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws is another cause of the age-long and unending conflicts between these two persons. Benedict Okate, EBS News. More fleeing inmates from the Medium Security Custody Center, Suleja, in Niger State, have been recaptured. The Minister of Interior, Lubumi Tunji Ojo, revealed these after visiting Kuje Correctional Center and the Federal Fire Training Institute in Sheda, Abuja. EBS Abuja correspondent Ereda Mumodu has the report. About 119 inmates of the Medium Security Custodial Center escaped in April following hours of heavy downpour with distressed parts of the facility. The minister who declined to reveal the total number of inmates so far recaptured assured that the security agencies are on top of their bits and are closing in on recapturing the remaining ones. He said his ministry is undertaking different projects to ensure the safety and security of the nation's custodial centers. Basically, it's not just about Kuje. I am happy to tell you that about uh, nine of our correctional centers too, we are, we are working to rehabilitate. Even the Suleja, I need to mention that, the Suleja correctional center that the work came down, you know that it wasn't because we were not doing anything. Because that, most people didn't understand that. Before the war came down, that we had already started making the walls, you know, rebuilding the wall. But because the correctional center, we can't make all walls at the same time. We have to segmentize it. Yes, we have recaptured a lot of people, and uh, work is actually going on. And uh, we're working with other sister agencies, but the details of that I won't be able to disclose in front of camera for security reasons, you know. At the National Fire Academy Shedda, Tunji Ojo disclosed plans by government to transform the academy to a world-class facility. So what we're about to do here is um, arguably uh, the best and the most sophisticated fire academy in West Africa. And uh, by the grace of God, on the 28th of May, we'll be having the groundbreaking. And we have a completion period of just one year to be able to deliver it. We are bringing down a lot of projects here. And uh, we're erecting more than fire academy that, is, uh, that can be compared you know, to the best you can get anywhere in the world. Because the minister listed some of the projects that will be flagged off by the president to include a clinic, Worship center, prop center, sports arena, lecture halls, hostels, amongst others. Henrietta Momotu, EBS News. You can watch Edo Broadcasting Service on Star Time Channel 113 and Go TV Channel 141. For more on our news, you can now subscribe to at Edo Broadcasting Service TV on YouTube. You can now report motorists driving against traffic one way by recording a video of the vehicle and sending the recorded video to this WhatsApp number 0813-203-0846. Still to come, House of Representatives launches investigation into irregularities in the issuance of international passport and utilization of resident permits. Details of these and more reports after the break. Public service announcement. It has come to the attention of the state government that many civil public servants in Edo State 
particularly those in outstations, have failed to update their records on the Edo Gulf platform as directed by the state government recently. Accordingly, the state government is given another window of opportunity for civil public servants who have not updated their records to do so. Such officers are to furnish the director of shared services in their respective MDAs with their accurate data and the directors of shared services are to transmit the data to the team set up by the government for this purpose unfailingly. Between the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily on any of the following dates, Monday 6th to Friday 17 to May 2024, at the conference hall of the Office of the Head of Service, Government House, Benin City. Please note that failure to comply with this directive will attract severe sanctions in line with the rules applicable in the service. This announcement is signed by Gbera CGO, Permanent Secretary for Head of Service. <laughs> Make we all come out on election day and vote Olumide Osai Bobo Akpata Una guy as governor of Edo State. He ready to change our story and bring better life for we and our picking them. Vote Labour Party, the party for Papa, Mama and Pekin. Make we vote well oh, Oludi, confirm. Now you be our guy. Labour Party, for whatever. Olumide Akpata. Edo, are you ready for positive change? The Edo State Government is calling on you, the champions of a cleaner tomorrow, to support its effort of making Edo State great again. Introducing the Mega Cleaner Program powered by the Ministry of Environment and Sustainability, supported by all 18 local government councils. Every Monday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., lock your shops and unite in purpose to sanitize your environment, sweep, clear the drains, and gather the waste for waste managers to evacuate. Traders, this is your time to shine. Beautify your surroundings, bag your waste accordingly for a cleaner, greener Edo. Remember, no more waste on road medians. Our streets deserve better outlook. Be warned, a Doe State Tax Force will be out to arrest dumpers of waste in unauthorized zones. If you are caught, you will be arraigned and prosecuted before a mobile court. A Doe State deserves the best. A heaven for investment. A cleaner state will be a testament to our culture and pride. Let's join hands with a Doe State Government to make the heartbeat the cleanest state. A Doe Wairi Agidami Hinye No Kobari Obo Tedu Di Uwege na jena, ijota ke ijota, no yi kiyave avyo beho ya, no kain imwame, no yi rekotu, pe no kain gwae ke vivyo baiso, kate kate enige so, ebo ki kiyeme yagba lo karyoba, ke vario bote do, tario bote do git le mado kame do ke wagmo, wele, o karyo bote do, godwin no gega se oba se ki, ma okpa, Oma e va, oma e gi a ye, oma e den o bo ok bo mwa mwwe na ye na. Tobe ek pari o ba o din, wele, ama se ti mwa do lo wu wa, wewe no kan gwa ke vivi o ba, rung da, ok mwa wa o wa na rwany. Alre o ba ve le ma yi me ri ma hi a, oma no ba, no yo bo wwe khoi. Ne mwa ve je kwe re, nan te me na, ogo mwa ve ra, na mwe zo ke kotu ga di o wa. Ne do ne mu yi, ne do kien ni gbombor yowe ya so wu nu, be ya kupa kon woye, ne do mye e na jega mo gbo riri, ke wu ji no yo se e vun huon ta gbon. A riyo bo te do, e omu inye na re, wa bi da yo. Welcome back. Following petitions and complaints by Nigerians, the House of Representatives Committee on Interior says it will investigate irregularities concerning the issuance of international passports as well as utilization of resident permits. Chairman of the committee, Honorable Ahmed Abdullahi, made this known during an interactive session with management staff of IRISA Smart 
technology and continental transfer techniques in Abuja. Arieta Momodu again has the details. The chairman, Ahmed Abdullah, represented by the vice chairman, Ganiyu Adeli, noted that the probe is aimed at identifying shortcomings in the process of passport issuance and implementing necessary reforms to improve the system. He added that the investigation is crucial for upholding the integrity of immigration procedures and ensuring that citizens receive fair and timely treatment, expressing concern that there is no accurate data of expatriates in Nigeria. The committee disclosed that it will also be a searchlight on expatriate quota. In the country, information before the committee portrayed activities around Payments, issuance, visualization of the resident permit, what you call the green card, is more convincing than that of the passport. Committee has revealed several petitions, complaints in respect of the issuance of the resident permits. In another development, as controversy continues to trail the escape of Viner's chief executive, Nadim Anjewala, from custody of Nigeria's security operatives, Honorable Dominic Okafor has denied a media report that he collected a bribe of $140 million from Viner's. Okafor had moved a motion on the floor of the House on the 8th of May, praying the House to probe the escape of the Viner's boss from the security custody. He wondered how the motion for a probe could be tied to a bribery allegation and described the publication as malicious and a calculated attempt to smear his hard earned image. Saying that I collected bribe for this very company. So because of that, I got worried. Immediately after that, I did a letter to Premium Times. That's the, um, you know, the media company that originated this story. I did a letter to them, which I copied to the um, right honorable Tajudin Abba, our speaker. I also copied to the deputy speaker and the clerk of the house. The letter was also copied to the treasurer of police, chairman of EFCC, and also director of uh, uh, DSS. And of course, I asked Premium Time to retrieve that information within 24 hours. If not, I take legal action against them. That is why I'm here to exonerate myself from such false accusation, aimed at tarnishing my image, which I have earned over the years. Najim Hajiwala, one of the two Binance executives detained in Nigeria for alleged tax evasion and other offenses, escaped from custody in March. Henrietta Momodu, EBS News. Speaker, House of Representatives, Honorable Tajiri Abbas as one of the dangerous effects of sport betting and gambling in the country, just as many Nigerians are getting addicted. Honorable Abbas was speaking in opening remarks at a public hearing held by the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs in Abuja. Eretia Momodu has the report. The House of Representatives had adopted a motion on the need to curtail the dangerous effects of sports betting and by extension directed the National Lottery Regulatory Commission to comply with the Lottery Regulatory Commission Act 2005. In the ever-changing world advanced by digital innovations, people are on a daily basis engaging in highly risky games such as sports betting or gambling, by staking their enormously treasured possessions, such as money, gold, houses, other possessions, hoping to make accidental gains and chances to get them back in multiple folds. This dangerous indulgence is becoming more and more prevalent in our country with many Nigerians, particularly our youth, becoming increasingly addicted. The DG National Lottery Commission, Larry Waju Bajabiamila, who was represented by the Director of Licensing and Operation of the Commission, Obi Nyerimu, differed from the Speaker's position on the effects of gaming. Gaming is the stock exchange for the poor, but we don't also encourage you to overdo it. Therefore, 
there are time limits to where you can play. You can't play early in the morning. You can't, you're, you can't get an operator to play with. Most times, it's time to come around 3 to 7. By 7, 8, playing has stopped. Because you can't take it home, you are forced to go out to play. That is one of the things um, the lottery operators have done over the years to uh, try to limit this gambling addiction. Earlier, chairman of the committee said the submissions of invited stakeholders will aid the committee's recommendations on the matter before the House. The leadership of the National Assembly, with all your contributions, will be considered at the end of the day, will have a clinical and a first class report, which uh, will, um, will be assembled so that it will help us to move Nigeria forward. We are not here to scatter the system, but we are here to see how we could uh, make it work. Henrietta Momodu, BBS News. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, a not-for-profit organization, budgets, and 136 concerned Nigerians, have filed a lawsuit against the Central Bank of Nigeria over its failure to withdraw the cybersecurity levy in what was described as an unlawful secular in the plaintiffs in the suit filed last Friday at the Federal High Court, Lagos State, asked the courts to determine whether the CBN secular dated 6 May 2024, directing financial institutions to deduct from customers' account a cybersecurity levy is unlawful and therefore ultra values the CBN. This is contained in a statement issued by Serap's Deputy Director, Kolawale Uluwadai, made available to journalists online this Sunday. Last Monday, through a circular, the APES Bank ordered all commercial, merchant, non-interest and payment service banks, among others operating in the country, to start charging a cybersecurity levy on transactions. The plaintiff is asking the court to determine whether uh, APS Bank's directives are not in breach of Section 42441 and 1621 of the Nigeria Constitution 1999 is amended and therefore unconstitutional, null, and void. Political leaders in the country have been admonished to endeavor to live meaningful lives that will impact the lives of the people. The president, Habitation Church of God International, Reverend Teoluwani Aderibigbe, gave the charge this Sunday when they delivered a sermon entitled Living for What is Important in Benin City. Reverend Olu Aderibigbe decried the ostentatious lifestyle of those in positions of authority to the detriment of the people. He explained that living for what is important is to fear God, do his will, lift up the less privileged by impacting on the lives of the people. Reverend Adelibibi told the congregation that when God places them in positions of authority, they must live a life that pleases God. A man that God gives privilege to lead the people, not by your qualification, not by your, your, your degree. The other people have degree over degree more than you. If God has made you to be a governor, a president, or a minister, whatsoever, or a pastor, a man of God, God have you to be there so that you can live an important life that will affect the people. God wants me and you to live a life that is very important. An important life is a life that people will reflect the presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Anything God gave to you and nobody can enjoy it, in fact, you are not serious. It is better for you and you to live for what is important. Anybody that is here, you know that you are a man, come and try my shoe, my shoe size will come. God, there are some shoes that are protesting against my spirit. 
because tomorrow I guess you I will get clothes. There are many clothes that you cannot wear. You are just five things that are not important. Why are you five things that is not of bread? I'm still talking, sir. Why are you five things that cannot feel you? EBS News. Unknown gunmen have reportedly killed three police officers, one Federal Road Safety Corps personnel in separate attacks in Enugu State. The gunmen had attacked a police division in Umabo, Aha Lumona, on Saturday night, killing two policemen. In another separate attack, the gunmen also earlier attacked his Royal Highness Igwe Patrick Eze, also known as Igwe Waziri, at Oba in Udenu, local government area of the state. The Enugu State Police Command spokesperson, DSP Daniel Undukwe, did not answer calls when journalists reached out to him for confirmation of the attack. The student of the Confluence University of Science and Technology Ogoro Kogi State, who were abducted by unknown gunmen on Thursday, have been rescued by security agents, including gallant vigilante men. The students were kidnapped while on campus, preparing for their first semester exams, scheduled to start on Monday. Commended the gallant effort of all the security agents who went all out to rescue the student from their abductors, adding that the unknown gunmen were confronted with superior power that made them abandon their victims. That was the news. Before we go, be reminded, that was the news. Before we go, be reminded that security is everybody's business. Report any suspicious movement to the relevant security agency. On this note, we want to say thank you for joining us on the comprehensive news tonight. Do have a beautiful night rest. Good night. <laughs>